So here's basically what it ails. We are not experts. We don't feel like experts. It's a bed made of just 100% rape. It's a goal. Like, it's fucking... I don't know. Like, I want to bite it. I don't know what a critic's job is for. Some people just want to take everything from me, is all I'm saying. It's and I'll never forget chocolate milk. Yeah. Chocolate. Holy shit, this is fucking beautiful. This is fucking genius. Pay me so that I can complain or praise this game. It's not like... I'm gonna try to make excuses for something I like. I don't have I don't have any any defense of this. It was just beauty. From there, an addiction was born. It's a sweet story. It's really funny. It's really cute, and it's like age appropriate. Thank you and good night. Downloadable conflict. Two assholes babbling. Hello and welcome to Downloadable Conflict. I'm singing this time. No, no singing this time. I had too, too shitty of a week to sing. No, I won't sing for you. Your soul's been crushed by the real world. Yeah, I'm lucky I'm here. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I don't miss your singing. I mean, I do. <laughs> Whatever will make you feel better, but keep you from singing ever again. That's what I want to say. <laughs> yeah, just tell me you miss it. But I don't, you know. You know, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it in a really sarcastic way. I really miss your shitty Axel singing. That wasn't. Oh, is it too too direct? I'm <laughs> no, sorry. That was. You, you, I'm sorry. I'm tired too. I can't. I can't it affect it too tone. straight. Okay. Well, we both had work today, and what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about adult content in video games, <laughs> or how I phrased it. What is okay? What's okay to put in a game? Right. That's what I was. Well, let's really... be even more clear. Uh, we're going to talk about sex and violence. Yay. We could talk about other things. We could. We like probably heavy will. I, because uh, films deal with certain issues. Sure. I would like to talk about things that aren't just sex and violence. You can like go what's wherever okay to, you want, buddy. Yeah, like 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 dealing with issues with people's family and stuff. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. I get I'm, it. I'm just saying. I get it. I'll, okay. We pre-warned them in the intro episode that we would do some major off-roading into other topics. It's not off-roading. I just I'm talking about any kind of okay life situation. What 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 is okay to put in a video game? What's okay. not? Well, let's let's start in the topic of video games and see where the journey takes us. It'll stay in video games. Okay, I promise. You just said the opposite, though. No, I just meant because I I, I didn't want to explain that I have a project with right, the film right. thing to okay, them. Okay, okay. But I'm saying when I went to another country like India and I found out what things in their movies they don't deal with because they don't like dealing with it emotionally okay. like they're too scary of topics right. so the movies don't you know have what that's a things. good thing to bring into this conversation because i think it's incredibly relevant to sex in games in america okay uh, the discomfort of dealing with things that they'd rather not have uh so i guess where should we start i mean i i got some notes here i guess we could start off with a couple of games that we've talked about in almost every fucking podcast because they're kind of go-to uh, <sighs> contemporary titles that have sex in them. Yeah. Um, I guess my issue, before I even get into these, is uh, what bothers me about sex in games and what I want from sex in games. And the the difficulty of phrasing that is, I don't actually know. All I know is what video games give us on uh, a sex-related field is uh, unsatisfying wholly unsatisfying and uh i don't necessarily mean games where you're just fucking chicks although those do exist i mean more the context of a sexual relationship uh with a adult that you have a relationship with in a game so like for example one of the things i have on the list is mass effect yeah. one of your romance interests in those games they always culminate in a sex scene and uh everything very about male. that yeah. It's very male. Well, it's very gamey, too. And I don't mean the taste of meat. I mean, <laughs> in Mass Effect, in all of the Mass Effects, it's your, your ability to get laid is directly related to your quest line progress. So you spend the whole game kind of doing the dance of eyes with this character, and by the end, once you've killed enough bad guys yeah. and talked to them and been nice enough times, yeah. you get the prize of their and, vagina. And that's how... It, men tend to look at things too because men are very uh achievement oriented anyways i would definitely agree with that yeah 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 
lacks depth. It really lacks depth. I, you know, for all. It's the, funny. I mean, it just occurred to me how male it is. It's super male because I always just chalked it up to this is how a game has to deliver this in a sequence. Right. For for you to meet a character at a beginning part of a game yeah. and to have something culminate in an ending part of the game. Sure. It would have to be kind of questy, but I'm starting yeah. to realize it works really yeah, well. Yeah, life for guys is not because, questy, <laughs> but men can break down. Yes, absolutely. Break what down what they need in that way. Right. So it works really well to be like. I've killed enough people. I've become awesome enough. I've right. been nice enough to you. Right, exactly. We so can I deserve now. your vagina. Yeah. Your vagina is my prize for yeah. being a good and soldier. I think women are way less linear. Like yeah. they're way uh humans are way less linear. <laughs> uh I'm not a woman. Yeah. I was raised by women, but I don't think that's terribly relevant. Uh, <laughs> I don't could feel be. like well maybe it is, but I don't feel like the you know, the insert coin to get vagina shit is true to life at all no uh i don't like you know for as much as i like tally for example i i bring her up all the time uh as she's a character I mean, yeah. yeah she's my she's my digital girlfriend but i don't have a real relationship with her oh. basically oh. i can have set yeah. conversations where i show romantic interest or rather don't not show romantic <laughs> interest and that continues me along a path where eventually she just throws herself at my dick yeah in a completely sterile, pointless sex scene that has really nothing to yeah. show for it. Yeah. Uh, this bothers me on a lot of levels. It, it bothers me on the level that I brought up, which is it doesn't feel like a legitimate relationship. Like, yeah. I want to talk to Tally. I want to spend time talking to this character and getting to know this character. Okay. Disagreeing with this character, but, like, having this bond. Like, I mean, the- obviously, like, it can't be a dating sim, but I would no. agree that if they threw in a few things that felt like you were sort of conversating with Tolly more... You know what uh, I want? That would have been kind of cool. You know which character in Mass Effect I felt like I had like the most natural conversations with? I can't remember, but he was uh, he, he was the lizard who was dying. Uh, that would be Thane Th- Yes, I was thinking th- 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 something. But anyways, Thane... His conversations were kind of cool. I don't know why, but like you really kind of went in the back of the ship. You sat down at a table with him. And you just sort of brought. They stuff did up. feel more conversational, and I it was cool. I tend to remember how they talk to each other more than how Shepard talks with anyone else. Yeah, right. Like there's a line from Mass Effect Two that I remember uh, intermittently for the strangest reason, uh, which is you can tell Thane because he doesn't have relationships with people, and he kind of muses on that point. Yeah. Uh, one of the lines Shepard can say is, uh, we lose as much as you do when you hold yourself apart. I don't remember if that's the exact line, but it's it's basically that's the gist, is everyone loses when you keep yourself away from the world. You lose yeah. and we lose. And I thought that was a really poignant conversational thing to say. Yeah. Like, it was really tightly, not too obviously written. It was something I could imagine someone actually saying, and it was like their way of saying, like, hey... Let me be in your life. Yeah. And I really like that. Uh, I never hit on Thane because that he's doesn't fucking fulfill green. me. Well, he's, he's male. Fucking fuck I don't find it fulfilling. <laughs> yeah. To each his own. I'm just, yeah. But uh, I, I was not particularly uh, interested in pursuing those options. But uh, to explain exactly what I want from an adult relationship, this is going to sound... Uh, this goes back to my Star Trek shit with art. Uh, my ultimate ridiculous fantasy is that games are indistinguishable from reality so i want to have to have the ability to have a relationship with an ai character that is indistinguishable from a real relationship with a person why i don't know okay because uh in the same way that the deeper that games get the more that i appreciate them I don't know if there's, like, uh, a line, uh, what is the the uncanny valley? I don't know if there's an emotional uncanny valley where I'll hit a point where, like, oh, you're too real, but I have not even come close to that point. And usually what detracts from games for me is how they're not real rather than how they are real. Yeah. Like, I like things that challenge me and perhaps make me feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I don't mean to say it as in... I want to retreat into a digital world from reality. Yeah. I think we're all kind of doing that in a sense. Um, but I don't mean that in a literal sense. But yeah. I want to be challenged in that you way. You want to be like, able to do that too. Yeah, I, I, I want to have a character interact with me and and make me have an emotion. And then I want to have to deal with that emotion as a human being. Yeah. You know, of like, whoa, that's pretty fucking real. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's interesting. 
you know, which is uh, not something that I think I have to worry about anytime soon. <laughs> and uh, and to go in the other direction with, um, I'm perfectly okay with with games just being about fucking too. I am. Too. I wish we could make more of those. Yeah. I I really I really <laughs> no I really want like some kick ass no I really uh, I have that badass uh, sex games and we won't do it we won't we won't make them we totally can yeah and I wish we could be honest with ourselves and real like just be like would that be rad if like we could have some really amazing porn yeah let's PC talk about that for stuff. a second I I we were talking a bit before we I would started play the recording shit out of them. about how we have a double standard for sex and violence yes. You know, uh, you were talking about this uh, tentacle game, which I guess we'll, we'll get into in a second because yeah. it'll become a Kotaku rant. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but before we get sucked into that vortex, Try to make that not happen. let's let's talk about the more salient point of uh, when Travis came over today. I sat him down and murdered fifty Brazilians in front of his face. Uh, I was playing a game called Max Payne. It's 3. pretty graphic, and I mean, like, really, like, kind of. It's, more than more than another another because like the bullet holes and stuff on everybody else like extremely graphic yeah I mean, people are just getting punched full of holes sucking and I was, chest wounds or yeah. ripped apart fa- I shot a guy in the face like eighty times until his face was yeah. just blood I feel the death more in that game than I than another game that was actually like oh whoa it's really dark and really real and yeah it, man and it really that whole game goes to a really fucking dark place and uh, I I really enjoy that. And uh, we were talking about how sex games, A, don't exist, but B, when they do exist, yeah, they can't even get near anything that resembles darkness without this hammer immediately coming down from our own community, not, you know, not to mention the outside world. And yeah. uh, I really find that incredibly hypocritical. You know what I mean? Uh one of the things that the article brought up, I guess, uh, the creator was defending his thing as satire. Yeah. But let's pretend it's not fucking satire. Let's pretend it's yeah, a game about he did make raping people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have also we have movies about raping people. We have books about raping people. We have all forms of art that are incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. There's this movie called Irreversible. It's a French film. Yes. It's literally about an awful rape. Yeah. And it's a 10 minute long sequence. And I watched this movie and here's the, here's the funny thing that might be the hinge of this topic is before you even get to the rape you see like 8 tons of violence and I was fine with it. I watched a guy get his face ripped off with a fire extinguisher. You know, I saw yeah. all kinds of just ugly ugly violence. Yeah. And then this fucking rape scene happened and I I literally couldn't watch it and I knew it wasn't real. Yeah. Like my brain was telling me this is not re- this is being acted. This is not a real thing that's yeah. happening. Well, I, I think it's also fair to to say that uh, that rape can be a much more personal act of violence sure. than when someone's getting shot. It would be more like watching a torture scene versus someone getting shot. Yeah. Because and there's also really... there's also the element of interactivity. You know, with a game you are doing it to another thing that is not a real person but simulates a real person. You know, that is that is pretty fucking dark. That being said, I don't think that there should be a border for art. I really don't. Yeah. I think art's job is to make you uncomfortable and to make you question what you think is okay. My favorite kind of art is the art that makes me feel like uh, uh I like I don't didn't realize I had yeah. this boundary until I hit this. Yeah. That makes me I don't I don't want to say feel better, but feel more adult That's in a fun, certain yeah. like I feel myself growing when I hit these walls of like I don't want to Yeah, cuz you're being challenged. There. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. That's Absolutely. kind of the whole point of, you know, and I think the being here. I think the hiding in the satire thing of like, no, it's satire. Well, we also it's... we also have to keep in mind that it's uh the 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 game is not the same as of uh, the whole movie because it was a card game. Yeah, that's an important that's, that's thing a really, to explain too. To, to, yeah, there's a lot of ways of depicting rape for different reasons and a lot of things. Whether it's the porn section of the old video store I used to work with, sure. or something online, or something on a French film mm-hmm. or a book, that's really different um, than someone developing a card game about seriously raping women. Which right. It, 
It's it's not about seriously raping. Right. Women, it's it's not. But it is perverted, and yes. that's okay I, to me. Well, yeah. Let's let's get into. And he was even kind of backpedaling from it being molesty perverted, which is say it, say it. Yeah. You know? let, let's get into that. Yeah. Let's get into perversion as a thing that people don't want to admit exists. Yeah. Because this is one of my major pet peeves uh, in life, and I think it uh, it affects video games directly. Uh, in that we can't have sex in video games because of this thing. And I think it's yeah. specifically an American thing. I don't think Europe has this problem. That comes from a person you know, who's never been to Europe. But that um, is the feeling I get from seeing their art. Yeah, I think if I think if I think if the French had to make a video game it would be really different. And they have made a video Did, yeah. Didn't they do uh Heavy Rain? Was that a French studio? I believe it was, but I'm not because sure. Because that's actually something really important because something I wanted to bring up earlier was Heavy Rain deals with uh, family trauma. Oh and yeah, dealt with an rape. abducted child and, and how far you'll go. And that's kind of what I wanted to say about uh, what I want out of games. We'll talk about that later because yeah, we're yeah, still yeah. in the sex thing. Yeah. But yeah, one of the things I want to talk about is games. Since they're supposed to be for adults, we should start dealing with topics that um, they they play more with yeah. things that make us uncomfortable instead of just making you feel fun while you sit on the couch. Sometimes right. I mean, it can be fifty fifty. But anyways, back to the back to the sex. What I want to say is. Um, you know, Mass Effect is the easy go-to game, but there were a lot of other games that had the dating in it, like uh, the Grand Theft Auto games. You, where there's there's I always have that chicks down on yeah, my list. You have d- girls you're supposed to date, and then a lot of RPGs deal with a romantic character, but those are like very much like a they're so shallow. Yeah, they're very shallow. They're and, so shallow. Like but, the, but even the Japanese, there was that there was that DS that DS game that was really famous. I don't know if you know about it, but it's very famous. It's, it's a dating sim game where you actually. Like, you conversate with the girl. She knows how long you haven't been on the game. Yeah. There was, like, nerds marrying this, the game and being actually having wedding ceremonies. Yeah, that's the, the other game. end. That's the pathetic end. That was, spectrum. like, that's, like, a real game about, like, develop. Like, the, that game was written so you could play it for yeah. months and yeah. there's always something to tell. That was like, you're really connecting of, to a character that Yeah, that was wrote. the kind of thing I was talking about before. Of, you know, like, having a relationship that is attempting to be indistinguishable from a real one. Uh, leave it to Japan to make it and to make it creepy and to pull all the creeps in. But that's fine. But they, they like yeah, this is they, one of the rare they have their own problems. This so. is one of the rare things where I'm on Japan's side. I certainly don't think that their view of art should be the view of art, <laughs> but I'm I'm glad that their hang they're more honest. are totally different. Sometimes. It's, some things are they're just so not honest about. Yeah. They're very not straightforward yeah. with their feelings. They're very not into just telling the truth yeah. about a situation. But, but they are very when they're much, out with something, it's okay it's... to be in love with an object or a machine. Yeah, like they that like love, more than any so... other culture. If it's love, it doesn't matter what you love. Yeah, but I mean, like any of the That's Final cute. Fantasies, any of the <laughs> God. Yeah, they're so they have problems. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're really they're, there. they're really into being in love. Um, yeah. Yeah, but like the Final Fantasy games, like I remember Lunar, Breath of Fire. There's always sort of like a a character, like a lovely person, a female that just like is in the situation, and you know that your hero should like her, you as the player should like her, but there's no like connecting with them. No, there's no emotional connection. No, even whatsoever. in Final Fantasy X, where I think Titus or Titus and Yuna finally roll around in a pool together, or something. it's so not believable. Yeah, but then that game is definitely more for children and women, so they have a different. <laughs> but women need believable things too. Yeah, but they're they're. I mean, mature they're, women. Their not romantic needs, needs are different women. than our romantic needs, and they, you know that because of their literature. It's very much like yes, a, but let's not let's not also put women in a fucking pen of they like shallow dumb shit too. No, that is no, dumb women. No, no, no. <laughs> there are advanced fucking women out there who look at that shit and call it childish, also. I know, but it's also for a, a younger yes, audience. Yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. In the like, same way that guys are quest-oriented like with their fucking... Like 11-year-olds are supposed to be able to play Final exactly, Fantasy Exactly, yes. They have yeah. this childish, undeveloped thing of yeah, like... Yeah, so it goes like, like a fucking Twilight film. With Titus's and Yuna's like attraction, I feel like they met each other and they're like, I'm protagonist. Are you love interest? Yes. And then they're in a 100%. pool. 100%. And when we were in high school, I remember girls having printouts of the CGI scene where they're holding each other in the pool. <laughs> like, that was a real romantic oh. thing that happened that they perceived, yeah. and they're going to remember this, and they wow. mortalize it in their binder. See? So, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I, mean, I felt that way when I was a little kid. I was like, wow, these people... I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. 
Yeah. That stuff just made more sense when you have an undeveloped brain. Yes. <laughs> it's like your boner's doing the driving. Yeah. Like the girl boner. But it's also manga, too. Like, when I was a little kid, I was reading certain comics. It was just, like, so amazing to see two attractive characters. Like, like there wasn't a deeper, like, I wasn't worried about, man, I wonder if they can have good conversations after eight months. I wonder if they... <laughs> yeah, you, you know, know, you never I think of that how, as a teenager. Yeah, like, you, know, you somehow when, think sex now that's, unlocks un, uh, unlimited bliss but forever. It was just every... Just, li- just two people liking each other seemed amazing. Yeah. It wasn't even about sex. Like, I, I Because mean, it I could never happened in your life before. Yeah, I would only hope I could touch her anime yeah. amazing perfect boobs. Right. Like, that just... I just... Because at that age, you're thinking, if I can really meet a girl who also likes me, that's amazing. If she's got boobs, wow! Yeah, like, these are amazing checkpoints we've hit. Yes. Like, yes, and so I remember are... when I was a teenager, I completely fucked up on the romantic front because I got so obsessed with that detail of, oh, are you going to like, like me? me? Yeah. Like, you it like wasn't, me? It had nothing to do with sex, and in fact, sex became part of the problem of, like, Sex was an enemy because I didn't know how to do it, yeah. and I didn't know how to do even intimacy well. It was more like, like you know, Danielle will tell you this because we dated for 40 seconds. I was so hung up on just finding a way into that moment and so paralyzed with fear that I was never going to get there that I just destroyed everything. <laughs> And I could totally see, actually, now looking back, just seeing two characters that somehow magically have it, you don't even deconstruct it. You just look at it as like, oh, they a did thing it. that could be had, and they <laughs> did it. They did it. Yay. They did it. They're vapid, annoying assholes, <laughs> but, but they're they free did it. And they're in love. This is hot. Yes, he has bleached hair, and she wears a dress, and it's magic. There's, there's fireflies. You know, and water. Although I, you know, what I did love about that game bittersweet ending. Wow, did that game really punch you in the throat in the ending? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Titus is a dream. Yeah, and you know what? Talk about what isn't is not okay. Yeah, they kind of threw heartbreaking thing. Dude, I loved that ending. That's like, cool. Final Fantasy X, I hated those two characters that right up until the things. ending where they were torn apart forever. But he's not real. That's, yeah, that's dude. The realization of oh, by the way, he. The fact that he exists is yeah. because this creature that you have to kill exists. And when that creature dies, this imaginary world that he comes from also dies along with him. Wow, that shit is fucking heavy. Yeah. You know, there was a game I cried. It was for the PS1. Yeah. It's called Klonoa. Let's get into real shit. Let's talk about games that made us cry. Yeah, okay. Let's fuck sex for a second. We'll but, get back to sex. I want to talk about shit that yeah, made me cry. Yeah, because this has something to do with, like, what is okay fuck yeah. and what is not okay. So, Klonoa was a really cool platformer yeah. about a little rabbit-eared thing, and she used a ring as, like, her method of fighting, and it's sort of, sort of moving, yeah. like a Mario plat. It was cool. Right. But, like, I remember just being really moved throughout the game anyways, because the art and the music were really great and it, like it really kind of took me there i remember thinking as a kid like i don't know like it hit me at an emotional level anyways but it right. wasn't anything specific but i really loved the game and i loved the character i loved the world the art was i don't know anyways i'll stop but get into why it made you end. cry give me the arc yeah give me the explanation so give I was me the all weapon this. twist in the so, chest you finally get to the game the, the, end, of the end of the game and uh the, all the people that you've been trying to save have been saved. You've saved this kingdom. You've saved these characters who are really relying on you, and everything's fine. And uh, I remember you really get the sense that you saved, even though like little little cartoon characters, you really saved everyone's life. Right. Great. But then like this portal opens up, oh. and it sucks your character into it, and basically your character dies. Like your character doesn't exist. Like now that you were this hero, this thing that everyone needed during this time, yeah. you can no longer be there. Like it, like you were, the, you were a tool, and you played the done. whole game not knowing that that was the case with you. You right. don't know that you're a tool. You think right. you're. It's like Gordon Freeman in Half Life Two. If the first five minutes of the game were chopped off, I you just woke up in City Seventeen. Yeah, with no knowledge that you were unfrozen just for some purpose. Yeah, and um, I don't remember, but it was really sad because. The ring you use has a little character that comes out and, like, does the action throughout the game. But, like, during, like, the cinema scenes, it's also, like, it talks to you and stuff. And I think it comes out at the end was, like, I'm a prince. I'm sorry you're not real. 
and then you just go away. And the Japan scene, loves telling protagonists that they don't exist. It's really what the fuck. It was is really it? heartbreaking because the part where she leaves, she's literally pulled. She's crying, and her nails are digging into the dirt. She's like, "No, it's no, horrifying. no, no, no!" And then she goes away, and everyone's just like, "There goes our hero." Wow. <laughs> and. You know, and I was like, ah. You know, I think it's. I think it's like. I think it's it made a different. Me feel so unsettled. I felt really unsettled because it, it really gave me the feeling of uh, impermanence. It really gave me the feeling of like yeah. what because your con what you consider reality is really your concept. Yeah. I mean, you want to argue as much as you want about like if I pinch myself, I know I'm real. But right. you know, it really a lot of it's in that's your like head. Japanese it's really, Twilight Zone. Yeah, and it got really Twilight Zony on me at yeah. that age, and I. Uh, you know, I think that's a big metaphor for them of, like, and I just get this. This is total stereotyping as a cool. person who's never been to Japan. Here we go. <laughs> Here we I go. think this is a metaphor for how they feel about their lives or, like, because their art tends to go in this direction mm. a lot of times. Yeah. Like, not just with games, but with uh, anime, with fucking books. I mean, that happened with Serial Experiments Lane. I mean, the end of that series is just what even happened. You know, yeah. do, does this character even exist? Ghost the character in the shell is, both is ignored. Of them are about that. Like it becomes a ghost in the world where the yeah. world just ignores her. Because yeah, Ghost in the Shell she uploads into like a, a basically the internet. She becomes kind of one with everything, and, right? So and singularity sort of this, type shit. But yeah. I think what you're talking about, I think for Japanese gamers, that was like for them it was like a metaphor of yeah, I feel like I could be heroic, but no one acknowledges me. But yeah. for you as an American who has no connection to that feeling. It was a mind fuck Twilight Zone, but thing. it was it was sort of spiritually devastating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't think that way, so you didn't like you didn't take oh. it as a metaphor. You I took feel it as real. real of it was, like I've been robbed from this world. Yeah, like what if you could just be erased? And if you believe in a soul, like you, they, like you believe if you have a soul, like that's even harder. Like yeah. for someone to say like, no, everything about you is real, but. You're actually not. Like, that yeah. was the ending. Like, everything about you is real. Like, you care. You don't want to leave. Like, right. it wasn't she was like, okay, yeah. goodbye, and then left. She was like, what? Yeah. I'm real, though. And they're like, but you're, but you're not. not. <laughs> Gone. Could you imagine, like, all of that? Like, your your identity and your essence just... No, I can't. ...reversed, so... But that, that's what I think. I think that... would be really upset. I think for them, it's their fucking metaphor of how they feel a lot in yeah. life, especially young people there. Yeah, uh, like what teenagers, am I doing? Teenagers, like that's their teenager yeah. thing. Could for I us, could I be could I become neutralized somehow? For us, we're such a I don't want to say empowered culture, but entitled culture that the idea that we deserve to exist never even occurs to us. So when they pull that rug of oh by the way you don't exist, it's such a mind fuck that it has a completely different effect on us. Yeah, you know uh, I want to talk about the first game that made me cry. Okay, and uh, oh boy, that game would be Mega Man X. Oh, uh, whoa. Yeah. Uh, so I got Mega Man X when I was like 9 or Is 10. Is it because you couldn't beat it for five days no, straight? No, <laughs> no. It was an emotional thing that actually happened. So I played through Mega Man X, and uh, that was a hard game good to play game. through. It was a good game. I think we've talked before, not on this podcast, Everyone but in our should lives, talk about, about how, good X how X2 well was. designed Mega Man X was as yeah. a game. Uh, that's not why it made me cry. Uh, Mega Man X made me cry because Zero was killed in it. Oh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, you know, in the very beginning of the game, Zero saves you from basically being fucked up by Vile. Yeah, and he's very clearly the hero character that you aspire to be. Yeah, you know, he is. He represents what you could be if you go on this journey. And uh, right at the beginning of the end of the game, he jumps in yet again to kind of heroically save you, but he fails, and uh, he through his sacrifice, allows you to defeat this character. But then he dies in your arms. And yeah. it's really fucking sad. And it's not sad if you're an adult because you look at Zero and you go, he has flowing 80s hair. Like well, he, he looks al- right. he's from a hair but, band. Uh, adults also understand sacrifice. So when I was as an nine, adult, you would understand, you know what, some people will jump. For, and take a bullet for another person. And, and when I was nine, it I would felt be like, like noble my friends sad. died. Yeah, and I remember like being literally devastated. Like I just I stopped playing to cry over a fictional characters, <laughs> and death. then defeat vile and a real <laughs> cry. Like yeah. I I actually ran to my mom and went, Zero died. They killed Zero, and she told me. You're if games are going to make you feel this way, maybe you shouldn't play them. And maybe, 
<laughs> that's such a. Uh, and maybe this is where this her. whole thing started. But like, I hope I'm not that parent. It like, felt maybe like you a, shouldn't have a Nintendo. But, I, but <laughs> no. But I, I I loved as an adult now. I love that I was challenged and affected in this way. No, I love cool. that it's something cool. just, affected I me. I get why she said that. Because I go through my life and read fucking news stories about Syria and drug cartels and feel nothing. Yeah. I just read a story of oh they found fifty severed heads on the border. Sucks to be those people. Like the amount of shitty cynical jokes that I made on Twitter, it's like my entire life is cynicism and eye rolling. So like when something pierces my armor and makes me like have an emotion, it's a really big deal for me. Yeah. Because I'm a really guarded person and I don't know I you know, we we can speculate our fucking awful childhoods where that fucking came from. We don't need you to know. get into you on the podcast. No. Um, <laughs> let's suffice to say that uh, Travis's dad was a magical, amazing man. Oh, yeah. And my dad was the polar opposite of this person. Uh, and how that has affected us as adults <laughs> is pronounced. <laughs> yeah. And one of the ways is um, I will occasionally read a news story and just break into tears and it's the weirdest fucking thing yeah uh we're really Speaking off the of rails my magical give a dad shit. and you breaking into tears we should tell the king kong story let's get there in a second okay but i want to humanize myself a little bit more before i embarrass myself okay uh in the past year i have cried impromptu at work twice uncontrollably huh and one of those times is when patrice o'neill died yeah because that was like really that was a dagger in my heart. Patrice yeah. O'Neill was a hero in a real way to me. Yeah, like as far as freedom of speech goes, I don't think you get better than Patrice O'Neill. If you've never heard of Patrice O'Neill, you've been robbed, uh, and you need to check him out. But I, I literally felt it in like I read that news and I felt like the world got way fucking smaller. And not a day goes by that I haven't seen a news story where I went the world needs Patrice to make fun of these assholes who don't realize how embarrassing they are. Yeah. I mean, like, I I was profoundly affected by his death in the way that a fan can be. As a, you know, as a person who doesn't know him personally, yeah. you know, I met him once, and it was, a, you know, it was an amazing experience. It was great. Uh, the other time I cried was, do you remember when the crazy bald guy shot the congresswoman and shot up a bunch of people in the crowd? Some 22-year-old guy, uh, Gabrielle Gifford, was shot, but she survived. She got shot in the head, but she survived. Yeah. Uh, astronaut husband, you know, real Cinderella story. One of the people who was killed by this 22-year-old was a 9-year-old girl who was born on 9-11. Or born around. I, th- but that doesn't even matter. For some reason, hearing that a little girl was killed. I don't know why this little girl hit me, but I I literally, I was at work when I read this story, and I went to the bathroom and locked the door, and I cried for like 20 straight minutes. (laughs) Dude, it was the realest fucking thing that ever happened. I I, I don't know what the fuck, I I felt like a human being for a whole 20 minutes, and a fragile, and a fragile exposed human being. Yeah. Just fucking bawling and not being and embarrassed like i didn't tell anyone at work this is the first time i've actually told this except for i think i told felicia but it was like it was such a bizarre surreal moment for me because it's so not how i'm ever affected by anything yeah but let's get to the king kong story now we don't don't have to honestly no let's do it because it's funny Okay. Okay. So, uh, so we went to see King Kong with a bunch of friends. Like, Back when King Kong came out. Yeah, was you remember new, it was like, like 2006 Jackson. or 2005, yeah, something old. like that. Uh, the King Kong remake came out, and um, we went to go see it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I saw it uh, with everyone, and I remember we were walking out of the theater, and I was like, "Wow, they can't killed King Kong. That was fucked up." You know, I I was kind of mad. I was also kind of annoyed at Jack Black's cheesy acting in it. It's like, I can't remember what his line was, but it was so bombastically delivered. It's just like, you asshole, get off the screen. I'm hoping this is the reason why you cried. It's like, behold the fall of man, or something like that. Uh, I, I can't remember what it was, but it literally made me have a douche chill moment where I'm like, oh, fuck you, Jack Black. Like, I just had a private moment with this giant monkey dying, and now you got to ruin it with your shit. Uh... And as we were leaving the theater, I remember looking at Matt, and Matt was fucking mad because uh, he had just seen a, a badass who killed three dinosaurs 
be killed in a bullshit way. Yeah. He was just angry, like, fuck that. Yeah. That's bullshit. King yeah. Kong wouldn't die. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that is bullshit. And then I went to the bathroom because I had to pee because it's a three-hour fucking movie. <laughs> And uh, I got into the stall and just started bawling uncontrollably. <laughs> I don't know what it is with me in bathrooms. Apparently, it's your safe place. Apparently, my safe place is in a fucking a small box with a shitter in it. <laughs> but like, I literally like squatted into the corner and like mushed my face and just like tried to cry as quietly as I possibly could. Which is, I was like. <laughs> 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 And I did that for like five minutes, and then I was like, I, I gotta go back and rejoin my friends. They're like, I can't be in here too long, and they're gonna think something is wrong yeah. and come looking for me. Having a bad So I poop. literally tried to push all of my cry out, where I was just like, <laughs> <"Ugh, cry." laughs> And then I have like wiped my face, and I swear to God, it was like, like a person who just killed someone trying to get their shit together in a bathroom in a movie. <laughs> like you, like the hitman's first hit where he just puked in the toilet, but there was no puke. And I'm like splashing water in my face. And I'm like looking at myself in the mirror, stone cold gaze, like nothing affects you, motherfucker. You're going to get through this. You don't have emotions. <laughs> and I step out of the bathroom. I'm okay. And uh, I can't remember if it was you or Matt who said, are you ready to go? And I went, yes! <laughs> and it just right back into it. And I swear, the entire drive home, which was at least 30 minutes, I was just sobbing. Fully loaded car. No one in it made a sound except for Dalder, who just went, dude. That was fucking it. It was fucking mortifying. And then, you know, funny enough, I felt like I had to explain myself to your dad. And I don't know why. There's just something, he's like so amused by how touched I was by this dumb <laughs> fucking movie. I was just like, I don't know, when King Kong died, I just had this weird flash of like every bad thing that ever happened in my life. I remembered all of them at the same time. Yeah. Like every heartbreak, every loss. And it just, it's, for some yeah, reason, was, it was so was overwhelming. Yeah. And crying over a fucking CGI monkey is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever done in my but life. But the monkey was us. Brian, it was wasn't, it though? Was it dumb? I was never a giant ape that tore up New York City. But I was never misunderstood were... in the way that King Kong was misunderstood. You don't know that. N- You're yes, so I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm a well-off white person. I've never experienced that level of tragedy. I've never been the only one. You're right. You're not like King Kong. I'm no, sorry. I'm not sorry. even in the slightest. Okay. <laughs> it's just embarrassing, and I'm glad I just put that on the internet. For- to be made fun of. Yeah. Because I like being made fun of. What was this topic about again? Um, I can't what even remember. Is okay to Why have... it's okay to have rape games. Let's get no, back no. into this. No, I, I, uh... <laughs> okay. uh... That's obviously your stance. Um, no, I was... <laughs> <laughs> no, what, uh... what I was bringing up earlier was... Because we're talking about things that make that hurt our feelings. Um, so, I have a, a very large video project I'm working on that I won't explain, but it caused me to go to India recently, yeah. a year ago. Spiritual and, journey? Uh, nope. Everyone goes to India on a spiritual Let journey. Let me tell you, whether you want it to happen or not, you're going to have a spiritual journey in India, whether you went there to have it or not. Really? Yeah, India has a weird... In a good way or a bad way? Or just Whatever way. you think a spiritual journey yeah. is going to affect you. Yeah? Yeah, no, really. Because I before I got there, there was somebody who looked me dead in my eyes and was like, you know, India does things to people, and you really can't control it. And I was just like, what yeah. do you mean? He says, there's a really, really, really ancient phrase about India that holds true. And they said, India is like an elephant, and you're like the, the person behind it. Like, it's going to go its pace, and you can't push it, and you can't make it go faster. And I was just like, that's interesting. He's just like, you just don't have control. You're going to go there, and you're going to be subject to it, and you're stuck behind it. It's bigger than you. And they really love elephants. Also, yeah, they love also I was stuck behind an, an elephant a couple times, yeah. but um, no, it actually oh, turned out I to be really it. true. Oh. After after almost two months, um, I I realized that India was the first time in my entire life I went somewhere and couldn't push my personal agenda on something, and I didn't know that that's something I do or probably what Americans do. Sure, until it's something I couldn't do. Right, because um. For the same project, I previously went to New York City, and it was 
it was a challenge, but when I went to New York City, I had my agenda, which was I'm going to talk to comedians and I'm going to sure. talk to these people. I'm going to get interviews and yeah. I'm going to put myself forward. I'm going to talk to yeah. people on the street. You know, I was working on a documentary. New York is very America. Yeah. It's very America. So it, it was really, I knew it was for me to get. So right. that's what I did. Sure. I just got in people's business mm-hmm. and, and I got my footage that I needed and I, and I took it myself. Right. And so I did the same thing in India. I was like, I don't know anybody, but I'm going to start looking people up, asking around and I'm going to get, and I'm going to get uh, interviews and I'm going to talk to people and we're going to explore these issues but I was constantly – the wind was taken out of me at every step of the way, and I realized I wasn't important like for the first time. Like it was the first time I could go somewhere. Even when you have an idea, a project, and it's failing, you're still pushing your agenda. Sure. India was like ready to have me when it was ready to have me. Yeah. And it was really disempowering place to be. And it was like a very spiritual like – Thing to go through to, to feel that right also America I got sick. welcomes I mean, all delusions yes and i think that maybe this is true of india specifically it's probably true of anywhere that's not america when you are raised in a very delusion friendly place and you go somewhere that is not catering to your delusions it's a system shock it is it was a very that's exactly what it was and India is the first place I've ever been where people could be poor as dirt and can't count, but none of them are stupid. Yeah. I've never met so many smart, homeless people. And they're not educated smart. They're just no. like you can't put anything past yeah. them. They all have this really weird common sense. And you'll and you'll realize that if you just kind of meet people from India. Like I think that's true everywhere. They're just though. sorta but I, I but I've been to I've been to the Philippines, I've been to some right. other broke places and uh they they have a they have a way different vibe and aura and right. Indians are Indians are very much they're really lo- logical and before anything before sense of humor or anything they're right. just really straightforward and uh, that's how it was the whole time and it's, it was very disarming yeah um, just a bunch of poor Vulcans that are constantly shitting yeah and uh, I've got some <laughs> shit stories but uh yeah I'm sure you do <laughs> anyway <laughs> two months in India the point is I wanted to talk to them about I'm like okay so Bollywood is a massive thing. It's right. so... I had to acknowledge Bollywood, and I wanted to talk to people about, okay, so you've come home from work, and you want to turn on your shitty TV. What is on TV? You know, what? what is fun? Like, they have to have comedies. Like, so what is the comedy thing? What are the movies? Because they have Bollywood. It's like, when you go to the theater, what is in the movies? And I found out that across the board... I mean, if you've ever wondered why the Indians have those those song and dance movies and it's like but that's like all that's it right they either have action movies or their song and dance movies or a combination of both right they don't deal with any heavy shit anything more complicated right. and i started asking why and they said it's 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 kind of two things one people are really broke so um if a movie ticket is still roughly like the equivalent of like ten dollars for them they want to go and they want to be entertained for eight hours. They want the Avengers every time. Yeah. You know, and since they can't, since they're still very repressed, it's a combination of all those things. It's a combination of everyone's obsessed with love and sex. Obviously, they they, they love fucking. They don't sure. have a lot of birth control and they have this the second world's largest population. Right. So there's, there's a lot of I fucking think everyone going. loves fucking. Yeah. So they, they know it. And they love attractive people, and they love colors, and they love jokes. So they shove all of it in at the same time mm-hmm. while not acknowledging scary stuff. Right. And only recently, it's like a real art house movement over there to deal with, like, a drug. Because I was, like, telling people, like, you know, like, recently we've had, like, The Wrestler come out. And, mm-hmm. like, I love watching The Wrestler, even though, God, to them, that would, it would be, like, a pointless movie. Yeah. Because the entire movie is just a depressing Right. You know, it's just it's just a fucked they don't up get guy. To escape. It's escapism. Yeah. So I see the same trend with gaming and I miss being able to feel something in a game. Yeah, but you know, I think Kickstarter to talk about art house shit. A Kickstarter offers another avenue of potential exactly. possibility. And I was looking at Steam cuz I know Steam is old news for everyone else, but I'm finally going back to look at Steam and I'm looking at all these $10 games Dude, and they're 3 and 4 hours ridiculous. long. They're amazing looking. It's always like the journey of some guy doing something. They're like they're full of like huge reviews and like they're story driven and I'm like this is the answer because it's the same deal with me. I can't spend all this money on a video game and when I do, I want to know that I'm going to like 
be taken somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I definitely will invest in in other games that will emotionally challenge me, like something like Heavy Rain. But there's not, like, a lot of options anyways. No. The movies is is way less committal for me. Right. And I can enjoy that because I like movies and I like spending $10 Well, games are interactive, and I think that that is an element that a lot of video game makers don't understand as intuitively as they think they do, which is... Yeah, it's true. We insert ourselves into these characters whether we want to or not. By being their hands, we become them, whether we want to or not. And uh, I I think this is uh, something that comes up uh, with my whole games aren't film thing. Uh, There are a lot of endings of games that I don't like because they forget that the player is putting themselves in the shoes of the character. And uh, for all the talk that I do of how much I love Silent Hill 2... Maybe I give Japan a pass for being so good at this, of because I'm I'm conditioned to expect Japanese games to have the attitude of you have no say over this person's fate or extremely limited say over this person's fate. But in American games, specifically like Western RPG, where so much of the focus is on you are the hero and you're doing your fucking shit, uh, when like a main character dies in a game, uh, I could name a game. I don't know if I want to spoil it. Uh, but let's just say there was a recent Rockstar game, uh, I guess it's not so recent now, that uh, in the end of the game, you are killed, and you are killed by enemies that you've killed way more enemies in the game than kill you in the end. And uh, for me, it was supposed to be like, it was very clearly supposed to be like a poignant, unavoidable thing. But the whole point of games is unavoidable is not a real thing. It's just a quest away from making the unavoidable possible. You know what I mean? Not unavoidable. Like, that is the whole hinge of games is struggling against impossible odds. So when games like Mass Effect 3 decide at the very tail end, Oh, guess what? It's still impossible and what you did is nothing. It just feels so fucking cheapened. Yeah. You know? Like, when I died in this fucking unnamed Rockstar game that you've probably fucking guessed if you have half a brain, I was frustrated. And I I remember reading reviews about the ending, and, like, so many game critics fucking loved it. And I didn't understand. It was a film ending. But I wasn't playing a film. Yeah. Like, the level before this, I killed, like, 500 guys. And then, bam, I get killed by this small group of people. So, what would have been a better ending if... I, not if, dying. Well, what if what if what if they really their point was they wanted you to die? What would have been like a good way to have your character die? I don't know based on the arc of the story if there is a good way for the character to die, because I f- I just feel like the fact that the character did die uh, ex- uh, espoused a lot of cynicism in general about life, which I'm not a f- I'm not a fan of. Like I'm a cautious optimist hiding in a pessimist's fucking words yeah you know for all the pessimism that i shoot out there at the end of the day i want to believe that things can be okay as long as people put their minds to making it okay yeah you know so anytime a game puts forth the idea of struggle all you like you'll never make it okay it's sort of like what you're saying with the indian audience it's like why did i pay to have this because Mm -hmm. it doesn't give me anything yeah you know okay well i mean i'd like to sort of um just say for the record, I think the answer right now is probably just to, it's like a combination of paying paying less and having people give you a game that's maybe as long as a book, four or yeah. five hours, and just letting just selling you the experience that you might be interested in. I mean, I'm definitely inter- interested in these companies like experimenting with these cool concepts and yeah. gameplay things and, and stories and journeys with your characters right. and an exploration and like that's really cool. And I'm hoping I'm going to start buying more of those games. Yeah. Yeah. I think gaming is at a space right now where it is bloated in the way that movies were back in the day where the industry really started to die because it was so stagnant. And from its almost death, some real art house shit was born. I don't think that the entire industry needs to almost die to accomplish that. And certainly art house shit has been born and will continue to be born. But I really hope that this that we're just at the shitty end of a cycle because there's so much focus on AAA games that are shout. They're they're yeah. the transformers of games. Yeah. Almost every game that comes out is designed to make money, not to make feelings. Yeah. And but then we've uh, got people making smaller games. And they're doing a good job. Right. And they're getting a lot of attention. Right. 
So and, they're not being ignored, at least. And to get back into the topic, which we took a wide-ass fucking detour yeah, from, we should go back to as far as sex from rate. games, I think that uh, sex is threatening. It's always been threatening, and uh, and I wanted to make this uh, bridge that will certainly insult people. I think that in the same way that uh, really conservative in the closet guys are really uneasy with anything gay, I think that there's the same feeling about sex, uh, both positive and negative, because games are interactive and not movies. In a game, like I said, with yeah. the Rockstar game, you are the character. Yeah, what you're doing, are you're afraid doing. Of finding out how they'll and behave, I think, or something. I think a lot of people are not mature in the sense of they're afraid to experience things, and they do. They want to not have the temptation of experiencing this thing. So when you put forth a game that has sex in it, and let's take the tentacle card game aside. Let's let's go really fucking hardcore. Let's go. There's a Japanese game called Rape Lay, which is literally <laughs> about raping girls. Yeah. That is a game that exists and has made money. Oh yeah. Lots of money in Japan, I'm sure, and has been pirated over here. I'm sure it has. I have no doubt in my get mind it. that I you can played easily it. get it. Yeah. Um, Something Awful did a review of it, which was really funny. And yeah. I kind of wanted to see ever since. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was, but is that it's curiosity or is it the perv part of you? Cause oh, we, both. You know, but, like, I'll say it's not a fetish I need to... No, certainly not. But, no, I mean, obviously, like, I'm perverted. But right. if it was too realistic, I wouldn't. I mean, it would just creep me out. But it's... All, all I'm saying is I think it's... it's yeah. I think, uh, and I have this written down. Uh, but people who are really into this stuff, it's very terrible because it's like a very it's a it's a prayer answering game for people who are into. Yeah, you know, I, I'm gonna put this bluntly before I move on to what I wrote down on the paper. If a rape game keeps a potential rapist at home rather than raping, then that's uh, a good thing. That being said, I yeah. think that a rape game has as much correlation to actual rape as a violent game has correlation to actual violence. I've played nothing but shooter games almost my entire life, and yet I have not shot a person or even hit a person that I can fucking remember since childhood. Yeah. It's hard to say which would be more common, though. Like, which would be easier for you? Like, say you were to snap, what would be your snapping thing? Would you go violate somebody? or would oh, you I, go like, I like to double hurt. down. I like to rape and kill. Okay. <laughs> you know, when I snap, I, I snap all the way. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, when I think of snapping, uh, I think of, honestly... Like, my my crazy, violent scenario that we all have in our brain doesn't really involve a lot of death. It more involves a lot of yelling and shaming, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, in my, in my ridiculous negative fantasy, it's not so much that I'm killing a bunch of people. It's more that I'm making them ashamed yeah. by pointing out what they are. I think people would point out that violence towards women is an easier thing to enact than right. going out on a violent... Uh, anything even going outside and punching people. i certainly think that's true and i yeah. also think that violence towards women is uh more accepted in society yeah. and certainly more gray as to like violence is pretty black and white if you hit someone in the face that's violence yeah you know but with you know with any kind you of your sexual shit face. it's it's gray as fuck yeah you know it gets gray really fucking fast but you know I think, like I said before, anything that treads into that territory and in, in an attempt to define it, even if it defines it incorrectly, allows you to have an experience where you make up your mind based on what a game gave you. And uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what I have written down here, I have sex versus violence. Uh, is rape okay if murder is? Like, I want to ask really hard questions, so I posit this question to you. If murder is okay in games, and society has decided that it is, is rape okay? Or is society wrong? No, I mean, um, I can totally answer that. I just, it's gonna, my answers are always gray, and I hope people don't think I'm floundering. But Don't I, even worry about yeah, that. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, we're communicating them. to... No, I, to me it would obviously be about, like, how realistic is it. So, okay, on both ends, Rape Lay, for instance, I've seen what that game looks like. It's mm -hmm. really cartoony. It's like the whole hentai aspect. And I've had plenty of time to muse over what the hell rape is in hentai. And right. their idea of rape is, is really not very accurate to what rape looks like. For them, it's a character going, suck my penis. And she's like, eh, nah, nah, 
Yeah, rape is a lot more like, tame like, in Japan. It's than basically it is in a guy America. doing all the dry humping, and she hasn't said it's okay yet. It's yeah. like technically always rape, it's, and it's always kind of creepy. But it's like that's not what no. hurting a woman's gonna really look like. I mean, like it's always really cartoony. Can, Cartoony's the word for this. It shit. can not a woman, but like a teenager. Like I think of like date rape. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I think of like a teenager who doesn't know their own body yet and doesn't know how to say no. I think they're hyper focused oh, on that the, point the, in time and yeah. they expand it to cover That's true. They're, they're very stuck in their um, adolescence. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very adolescent um, expression of sexuality because right. they get so stuck in that age group where like they couldn't get girls and there's girls all over the place in their schools and those skirts yeah. and stuff. So because they're stuck in that adolescence, they bring it to adulthood because they're just as restricted as adults and they all become like businessmen and stuff. Of course. Statistically, like they're going to have a job in a company. Yeah. So for they like they need to like lash out like right. they need to like just grab someone and so right. like the fantasy is like to take all those girls they've been surrounded by and just finally have sex with that girl right and if that means yanking down their skirt then that's gonna be the fantasy yeah it doesn't usually inc- it's like it usually doesn't go to like hurt you know what i mean the fetish seems to be getting away with something that they you can't shouldn't. yeah that's that's really it that's really the vibe of it that's you know really I mean? it so on the other hand if you were to say can i murder someone in a game and if it's like max Payne, where you're just like bam 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 and they die they're they're kind of equivalently cartoony to me and i wish we would treat them equally but if we're talking about a game where it's like let's pretend rape play is really like about victimizing a woman and raping this woman like well, in a it way is. do you know what the plot of rape play is no the plot of rape play oh you like follow them or something right is a schoolgirl. Well, that is creepy. Yeah, that part. Dude, it's super creepy. I just think uh, of the, the the actual game sequence. Let me where explain you're like, it for the audience. Boobs. Though. To yeah, touch. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, let me explain it for the audience. The basically the plot of Ray Play is a mysterious stranger that you get to play has an God, encounter yeah, on the creepy. train with a schoolgirl, and she kind of brushes him off and embarrasses it because he tries to make the grope oh. move like on the train. And embarrasses oh God, they do. Him. They add the anger aspect, and which is creepy. And he vows revenge. <laughs> and he enacts this revenge by kidnapping the mother. First, no, or the sister. Or something? First, kidnapping the technically not, but totally is underage sister, uh-huh. who looks like a twelve-year-old. Yeah, and raping oh, her, God. and then kidnapping the mother. Or rather, blackmailing the mother into showing up because he has the daughter, and then blackmailing the original girl by saying, "I have your family." Okay, no, that's awful. Yeah, that's awful. That is dark fucking yeah. shit. Okay, and there's I don't... no lesson in it. It's just no. a fucking game that's evil. Yeah, it's it's letting you be evil. Um, so in that case, I don't think that's okay. Let's put it this way: if uh, a a rape sim game had the graphics of Max Payne three, and Max Payne three had the the torture options that right rape play had and they traded i would i would say that's wrong i think if something looked as realistic as is is max Payne and you were choosing what you wanted to do while they're all crying and like there's blood or something like there's some heavy wrong. shit that happens in max Payne. and if and if and if <laughs> real max pain looked like it did and you had all of the fucking like list the, the options right how you want to murder someone in a room then right. i'd be like that's not good either. I would. I well, think they they're they're both so comic to me. Yeah, I can't take either too seriously. Well, here's here's where uh, we were bagging on Kotaku for this, but I think that you might have accidentally stepped in it too, which is sliding scale scale morality. Which is depending on how close to real it is, that's how acceptable it is. Yeah, I think that rape play is a game morally is as about offensive as you can get. Yeah. However, as an artist, I think that it's it's a good thing that we live in a world where it can exist. Yeah. Simply in the same way that I'm glad that Mind Camp exists or Mind Comp yeah. exists because that so is something we can point at it's and go, a, look how fucking ugly this yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's on the table. No, I agree. No. I, I hadn't acknowledged like how premeditated the whole aspect of rape play is supposed to be to help get you in that Dude, evil it's mindset. it's super fucking... No, that's really fucked up. It's super yeah. wrong. Yeah. And, uh... There's the added uh, dimension of if you accidentally get the girls pregnant, you have to, like, throw them downstairs. Oh, God. So it's just – it's just a hideous – it's it's Japan. It's Japan in a nutshell in terms of – It's everybody, though. Uh, but, but like I – you know, you were At saying – put on the table. It's cartoonish looking and silly, but let's say it does look like Max Payne 3, which is very fucking real looking. In my opinion, I still think it should fucking – 
have a right to exist. Oh, I, I mean, are you asking if I think they have a right to exist, these games? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> because here's here's the conundrum. I mean, if they did, it's not going to last long. Here's the conundrum for gamers, which is why I don't necessarily get angry with Kotaku, but it is hypocrisy, is gaming is a fragile medium. Yeah. Even though it makes a shitload of fucking money, it's a fragile-ass medium. And anything that is hyper-controversial is dangerous to the entire medium. Politicians are looking for any excuse yeah. to destroy this whole yeah, fucking every game thing. Is, is, is you know, fucking... Mass Effect was... Uh, accused of being a rape simulator. Which is really weird. Rapeplay is a rape simulator. Yeah, it it's is. literally exactly as advertised. It simulates rape over and over and over again. Mass Effect simulates yeah. what happens when you uh, impress a girl enough with space heroics to want to have se- consensual <laughs> sex with you. Yeah. And then you get to see some of their skin. I yeah, guess. Not sorry. really. No. Yeah. You don't get to see any nipple or vagina, which is no, you know, I mean, the holy grail of sin in America. <laughs> Everything else is okay, but if you see those two things... No, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not okay with those kind of sex games in that sense. It's pretty tasteless, but I'm also not okay with, like, how we praise all the murder, like... Right, and yeah, I, so. I, think, I think we need to separate into two ga- categories, specifically with Japanese things. I think the, you need to have sexual immaturity and damage as a person, because those, those create two very different experiences. I think rape lay is extreme sexual immaturity. Yeah. This is like a teenager's yeah. idea of what's okay yeah, because just, you yeah, don't understand consequences. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you get into, like, bondage stuff, which is just as fucked up uh, in terms of, like, how damaged you are to be into how deep bondage – like, bondage can get really fucking weird. I don't yeah. say fucked up in a negative way, but fucked up in a real way. A normal person doesn't go – you know, I want to have fucking burning wax poured on me. I don't want to be hit or yeah, simulate eat a shoe. In bondage play, they sometimes simulate rape, and I I really that's think... that's another thing too. It's a, it's a legitimate fantasy for some people. It's an it's an outlet for some kind of negative yeah. emotion, and I really think that it is a very different thing. You know, like I really feel like that is damage that is trying to make itself better. And I'll say the same thing for specifically Max Payne 3, not for all games, but Max Payne has always been about violence facing inward. Because Max is not a good character in terms of, like, he's not a great guy. Yeah. In fact, they mention of how in the beginning he was a great guy, but as he just continues down this horribly violent path, he just becomes more and more shitty and amoral. And by the end of Max Payne 3, he's like, you know, like, I don't even recognize myself anymore. I'm a sad caricature of a better man. Yeah. Like, that's what he calls himself. And it's such a poignant thing of, like, look look at what he's become by indulging in violence. You don't come yeah. away from Max Payne 3 thinking violence is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Uh, granted, the game is fun as shit, and maybe that helps detract from the point. But at the end of the game, I didn't feel like, wow... You know? <laughs> I'm awesome. Like, yeah. I loved how negative it was. I loved how it put me in a space of, like, what is violence? How valuable yeah, is violence? It's really the downward spiral in that game. He they really want to show you that. the definition of a downward yeah. spiral. And that happens, you know. You know. And I think sex games should be allowed to do the same thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I, I think that you need to have a game that is just fucking ugly. But yeah. on the other hand, you know, like on one hand, I understand the gamer's fear of we we are not allowed to broach this topic yet because our art form is not quote unquote legitimized. It's incredibly misunderstood if people are going to, yeah. But on the other hand, yeah. when does an art form game le- gain legitimacy? You know, like when are we in the fucking safe part? Because I mean, it's art gotta... is never about being safe. No, yeah, is but it's, it? I mean, if you're talking about like a strategy of like when, it would have to be like after... A certain amount of games come out, and they affect a mainstream audience in a way that challenge them, which is what films did. Well, it's already happening. I mean, but you not and a I mainstream are audience. Like, like if some, like if Call of Duty advertised one thing, and I know there's a couple surprises in that game, that like, uh, like the like the airport shoot thing. But like, say they they stuck something in a game I everyone's going to play. I loved that they put that in that yeah. game. Uh, but just say, to cover for the audience real quick, in Modern Warfare Two, there's a level where. Uh, as an American undercover, 
you have to go with some Russian terrorists and completely shoot up a Russian airport full of innocent civilians. Just mown them down. You kill easily a hundred people that don't deserve to die. And it it was so ballsy to put that in the game. Yeah. You know, that is what I think games should be allowed to do. And it was such a not necessary risk. Modern Warfare 1 was a massive success. Yeah. And Modern Warfare 2 didn't need to go there. But it did go there to make you have a real... Like, it was a real... It wasn't just played up so that you could go, oh, we're shooting... It was like a real fucking thing that was part of the plot. It was a horrible, awful thing that you really didn't have. And by the way, you can choose not to shoot anyone in the whole level. And uh, in European copies, I, either the German copy or the Japanese copy, if you actually do shoot anyone, you lose. Yeah. And they also made the level skippable uh, so that you don't even see it pop up in the campaign. They'll just mention it later. But the balls to put something so awful in it and to force the player to be part of something, I think that is what makes games... Yeah. That is the artistry of games, is the interactivity part. I'm forcing you to be in a position where you can do an awful thing, you know? And this is why politicians want to fucking step on it. This is why... This is the dumb rube argument of, ah, I feel threatened by this thing because I don't think... I think they feel uncomfortable with being given the adult responsibility of having the ability to say yes to yeah. something that's yeah, awful. Yeah, they're scared of what they would do. They're, right. They don't know what to do with their hands. You know, you know? and triply with sex in this country. Yeah, trip, yeah. You agreed. know, with violence, we are accustomed to violence. This is a country that has embraced violence as a thing that is part of our culture. Whether it's real violence or stylized violence, we... We appreciate violence in this country. Uh, sex, not so much. Yeah. You know? And it's frustrating. Yeah. It's frustrating. I totally agree. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, yeah, I don't... I, <laughs> no, I, I, no I, I totally agree. Um, I guess, like, there was something I... Um, this is this is this kind of started with a a thing that was brought up on Kotaku, and I wanted to bring this up for my soon to be Japanese rant. Yeah, uh, let's I'll just doing... do a nice little Kotaku preview that's almost wholly separated from this. Topic. Yeah. So what happened was basically there is this guy who um, made a Kickstarter, and he has a card game, and the card game is based on you as the player are a horrid tentacle monster, and you're in a school, and your job is to basically do all sorts of molesty type things, or incite molesty things, or I don't know what it is, but it's like they hired it's kind like of a rapey card game, rapey card game, and it's like really anime, really manga, yeah, looking. And, Everything uh, about what you just said is really anime. Yeah, super anime. It's <laughs> so um, people got angry because they just saw this as. Uh, rape, and then the Kickstarter kicked him off, and then he started backpedaling and saying, you know, he basically wasn't standing up for himself except for that it wasn't rape, and he doesn't appreciate people saying that's what it was, but he was apologizing if he hurt anyone's feelings, and... Um, now, was this a straight apology or a tongue-in-cheek apology? No, he was a... Where he's like, you know how people apologize no, for other people's there stupidity? was a straight apology for incidentally hurting anyone's feelings. He's right. just like, that's not what we were about. That's right. what he was saying. And then... I scroll up through the through the through the um, articles later, and I mean my my BS detector was going off like a little bit. I mean part of me is like oh, I was rolling my eyes at this game. I'm like yeah this is really nerdy and pervy. But then as I was looking at it, I'm like it's really funny looking, and the art is so like hentai CG stuff. Your like, perp switch got flipped, where your rational brain was subdued from hating it for a second because your boner started talking. No, I'm not attracted to the whatever it was offering. But it would be okay if you were. Just a little bit. But I'm letting you know this wasn't like a perf thing. I mean, it comes right. from like appreciating comic book stuff, like growing up around this stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, all I, I'll all let, saying... I'll, I will let somebody who's never seen this stuff say it's really gross and perverted and rapey and I'll go, all right. But as someone who understands right. this medium, it's really jokey. Sure. And I just don't find it that offensive. Well, what I'm trying to say is maybe the perv part of it. I mean, an honest perv doesn't begrudge other pervs their perversion. And yeah. could it be that part of your brain went, okay, I think this is stupid and it annoys me. However, someone is obviously going to enjoy the shit out of this and good for them. 
Yeah. I mean, I thought it was stupid because it was a card game. Oh, yeah. I they, agree with they, that. They, yeah, I thought it was <laughs> stupid retarded. because they were investing a card game. But I thought the idea that someone really made a card game based off of all kinds of, like, like uh, manga school Stereotypes, scenario. Yeah, yeah, school scenario pervert parts of the comic is really – It's I find that kind of funny. I'm like, really? Sure. But what was bothersome is they took a really high horse stance towards this – towards this because the guy is selling it from a pervy from pervy, pervy perspective and he has every right to do so in my opinion. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. We, we talked about that earlier. And then, I don't like the high horse shit with perversion. Everyone yeah. has a level of perversion and I think everyone should openly Everyone wants that. to squeeze boobs. So like that's what the card game's about. <laughs> everyone. I don't know about everyone. Whatever, you know. Everyone what I mean. wants to squeeze whatever their boob is. Yeah. Everyone has a boob that they want to squeeze. There's, a, there's, yeah. And then, so I'm scrolling up, and it just, it made me think, okay, so this is on Kotaku, a website where we're praising anything video game in Japanese culture, just like all the time. And uh, I'm constantly reading about all these fucking games. It's like, what's so much better about everything else we think is cool? Yeah. Like, what's so much better about that? What's so much better about having a barbarian with the new helmet on or, like, the character with a gun in his... Like, mm. like all we're doing is shooting stuff. Like, yeah. this is stuff that we take seriously. Like, Preach, sister. Like... <laughs> Get angry. <laughs> so, I mean, they're hiring writers to sit down and really review the next insert shooter like we're gonna really talk about like the yeah, no like, we're gonna go like, in on the deep end on fucking modern how, warfare 8 but that's yeah that's how we treat every game it's like everything gets a good yeah. review and we're talking about the gameplay and this and that and it's like we never acknowledge how fucking silly it is that as adults we keep sitting down to shoot things and then someone makes a game about boobs and that's shitty yeah you know so I, I scrolled up and I saw what really made me mad was I saw this article called The Art of the Video Game Massacre and yeah. it was talking about the five best games to go on a massacre in, and I was just like okay that's really cool that's yeah. really cool that's yeah. cool Kotaku really really cool yeah <laughs> but, like why can't we just enjoy both things but if one tit flies out yeah and I get that the argument is going to be this is a game oh. about touching girls against their permission oh. and I don't really know how to defend that except that I've it's... You defend it by saying art is art, and art has always touched upon darkness. That's yeah. In the same way that art goes to light places, it also goes to dark Yeah, places. I mean, I would love to see how much of the card game is about suffering. And, like, answer me that. Probably like, how, not very much. How much of it the card game is about making women suffer? Or right. how much of it is it about... Well, part of their complaint of it will probably be that you will not see women suffering except in a token sense. And that they will say that the game is trying to make you think that the suffering is a token suffering yeah. and not real. And that this is the most damage that you could do to someone by raping them with space tentacles. Which is, know. But that, <laughs> that in general tends to be the vibe is people are afraid that games and media in general or art in general will do the thinking for them. And for a lot of dumb people it's actually true. But that is like the the subtext of so many arguments that I see that are anti-anything yeah. is we're afraid that this game is putting forth the notion that doing these things are okay. okay yeah. And if that exists, then maybe people will think it's okay. It's a bad foot forward to have a perverted but card you, game. Yeah, but you can't do the fucking, you know, mind police really ever. You have to trust the world to police itself. You have to trust children to turn into adults and become responsible and no amount of mind policing and thought policing will change the fact that some people are going to think that's okay no matter what oh, yeah. no matter what you do there's going to be some psychopath that's born that thinks I deserve to take vagina with my space tentacles you know I, I, I mean I'm yeah. saying it in joke form but it's a game you, for you understand adults. what yeah. I'm saying I don't know you know and that thought policing is really what bothers me more than anything else that that tacit fear of Adults not capable of being adults. Yeah. You know. Um, so, gee, I don't know. I don't know how much more windbagging we can do in this fucking topic. I mean, I, I think we, we, safely, we safely covered that, uh, that A, I want to have a real relationship with a fake person in mm -hmm. video games, and B, I want them to stop stop soft shoeing with the sex yeah. for various reasons. And I think we got carried away with the rape angle. I want to see consensual sex. Before we close this topic... Yeah, that, it was not about is, that. Yeah. It was so not about <laughs> rape because no one in this room wants rape. Believe me. 
<laughs> I don't think I need to even say no, that, but I'm maybe I should. Sorry we said that. Well, I, I maybe I should to, because we've we focused on how it should be okay to have those games, and I don't oh, want yeah, you yeah. to take me wrong. Uh. When I think of sex and games, rape is the last thing that comes to the table, not the first. Yeah, you know the reason that I even you know thought of this topic way back in the day in the first place is me and you agree that we want to see a game where you have a legit relationship with a character and you can have an actual sex scene with them that shows some kind of level of explicitness and it's not embarrassed of itself. And the closest I've That's ever the keyword, seen I think, that... is to not be embarrassed of itself. Exactly. Yeah. And the closest I've ever seen to that is The Witcher, which is a fucking European game. It's not yeah. an American game. You know, anytime tits are in an American game, it's in the shallowest possible sense. There's no fucking maturity. It's like BMXXX, which is, wow, that's a fucking old reference. Whoa, Jesus Christ, Jesus, I brought that out of my ass. Tits and dirt bikes back to my head. I'm a time wizard, yes. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's always in that context of look at tits. Yeah. Like in God of War, it's yeah. a fucking mini game where it's like, can I fuck the bed in half? It's never, yeah. there's never fucking depth. I want to sex to be quit being treated as like some kind of crazy end goal candy or just fluff for you yeah. know to to pad the journey sex is important and it's also mundane and i want to feel <laughs> yeah a, it's true i want to feel both of those things about a sex it doesn't have depiction. to be magical either it doesn't need to be i want to fuck rainbow. my video game girlfriend and have it be not a special intimate crazy moment because it's it where to be, people go naturally i it, want it to it, be it tuesday to, for these yeah, characters it, these things lead to sex of like people do. man i shot a lot of fucking space aliens yeah I really like i'm stressed unwind. out you roll into bed and they yeah. make out and start fucking man i can't fucking fix this generator let's fuck that's it <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to have any gravitas in it. I want it to be so almost ignored part of the thing where it's so not the focus. Because that's how sex is in real life. Yeah. You're like, man, I'm bored right now. What do you want to do? I don't know. You want to fuck? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that shit happens. Yeah. Never in video games. No. <laughs> Never in fucking video and games. And I would just like to see sad things happen. I, don't I, know. Want... I want. I want. I want the the wrestler of the game. Yeah. <laughs> No, I Maybe want art movie, to but... imitate life. Yeah. And sex is part of life. And and I'm tired of sex being treated as either magical or meaningless. Yeah. Like not meaningless, but like you know what I mean? Like the, pervert, the childish yeah, yeah. way of like, oh tits. Yeah. Like I'm tired of ooh tits. I'm twenty five. I'm over tits. <sighs> I've touched tits before. Yeah. I've touched many tits before. They just don't hold the same mystique as they do for a 12-year-old. So stop making games that treat me like I'm still 12. Like, you're not going to believe the tits that you might touch. Whoa! Yeah. Tits! Yeah. No, I completely agree. Just fucking shut up. <laughs> Ugh. And, uh... All right. You know, if you have a rant, that would be a great no, time. No, like, I, I totally agree. I, I yelled a minute ago. Yeah. Um... No, I agree with you. So, all right, beautiful. I was just listening. And all I'm right, happy. Well, uh, I guess then I'll say that uh, this has been down- downloadable conflict uh, or the Travis and Brian fun time hour, yes. as I like to call it. And uh, we're gonna shut off the mic now, so we can have passionless mundane sex, <laughs> like we do every Thursday, like we do every <laughs> Tuesday when the generator's broken. Yeah. All right. Thank all right. you for listening. Good night and goodbye, I guess. Yes. You're welcome, America. You're welcome. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>